Good morning. In this video, we will give you a brief explanation on the embryological basis of the descent of testis. So, before we go to the embryological basis of descent of testis, let's see how testis develops. Now, testis develops in the seventh week of intrauterine life and that too from the genital ridge which is present somewhere here. This is the kidney. So, this is an adult kidney, adult intra-abdominal part which is being seen. So, just see that if this is an embryological part, if, the, if this is the part of the intrauterine life, here is the kidney and there is the mesonephric ridge over here. The kidney develops in the intrauterine life in the pelvis, whereas the testis develops in the abdomen. There is the mesonephric ridge from where the testis will the testis will be developing from the genital ridge which is just beside the mesonephric ridge. The testis develops retroperitoneally in the dorsal abdominal wall or the posterior abdominal wall. Now you can see this is the kidney. This kidney is actually developing in the pelvis and the, it ascends and the testis which is developing along the posterior abdominal wall, it descends into the scrotum. Now the point is that this testis is developing just by the side of the mesonephric ridge. Now where the mesonephric ridge is present in the intraembryonic life? In the intraembryonic life, the mesonephric is ridge present, the mesonephric ridge is present in the posterior abdominal wall. The testis is attached to the mesonephric ridge by a fold of ligament known as mesogenital. It is attached to the mesonephric ridge by the mesogenital and this mesogenital will be attached to the diaphragm under surface by the suspensory ligament of the testis. So, above from the testis to the diaphragm there is the suspensory ligament. Okay, And from the lower pole of the testis you will find a yellow colored strip you are finding this yellow colored strip is nothing but a fibromuscular band known as gubernaculum. So, as I was saying, this is the testis which is cranially attached to the diaphragm by the suspensory ligament and caudally attached to the floor of the scrotum by a fibromuscular band known as gubernaculum. Now, as this mesonephric ridge is going to atrophy, the suspensory ligament is going to disappear and the testis lies in a caudal position. So the testis, it lies in a caudal position. The lower end of the testis, as I already mentioned, it is connected to the bottom of the empty scrotum by a fibromuscular band which is known as gubernaculum. Now, this gubernaculum is a very important structure and you have seen it during the inguinal canal videos. That in the inguinal canal videos, I have already told you about the spermatic cord and how does a spermatic cord travels through the inguinal canal that will show you the path of the gubernaculum. Now, what happens? This inguinal fold of peritoneum over here, it will give rise to the gubernaculum. Proximally, the gubernaculum is attached to three structures. So, in here, the gubernaculum is attached to three structures. One is the lower pole of testis. Number two is the peritoneum in front of the testis and the mesonephric duct passing posterolateral to the testis. So, the gubernaculum again 
is connected to number 1 the lower pole of the testis number 2 to the peritoneum in front of the testis and number 3 to the mesonephric duct passing posterolateral to the testis distally the gubernaculum it splits into a number of fibrous threads known as fibrous threads of Lockwood or tail of Lockwood. It is known as fibrous thread of Lockwood or tails of Lockwood. This tail of Lockwood will be having five attachments. Okay, what are the attachments? The primary attachment will come to the bottom of the scrotum. So, the primary attachment will come to the bottom of the scrotum. The other attachments will be one in the perineum. It is not shown in this model by ribbons the, because perineum is, cannot be seen over here. So, one is at the bottom of the scrotum. The second will be at the perineum. The third will be at the symphysis pubis just above the penis. The third will be at the symphysis pubis just above the penis. The fourth will be at the anterior superior iliac spine. The fourth will be at the anterior superior iliac spine. And the fifth one will be on the medial side of the thigh at the saphenous opening. So, I repeat the tail of Lockwood or the distal end of the gubernaculum will be splitting into five slips and they will get attached as follows. The main slip will get attached which will remain actually will get attached at the floor of the scrotum. The one which is and the other five four slips one is going to get attached at the symphysis pubis just above the penis just above the penis the third slip is going to get attached to the perineum the fourth slip is going to get attached to the anterior superior iliac spine and the fifth slip will get attached to the medial side of the thigh near the saphenous opening now why this tail of lockwood or the five slips are important it is important because there is a clinical condition known as ectopic testis. In ectopic testis, the testis is not found in the scrotum but it is found elsewhere, other places. And these other places will be determined by the attachment of the different parts of the tail of Lockwood. So, what will happen? This is the gubernaculum, the yellow strip from the lower pole of the testis to the bottom of the scrotum. This is the gubernaculum which is a fibromuscular band and it will shorten. It will shorten and this gubernaculum along with it will bring down a pouch of peritoneum as it will bring down the testis lower down. The gubernaculum is shortening and the testis is coming down the testis is coming down and it is coming down to the bottom of the scrotum mainly when the testis is coming down to the bottom of the scrotum the gubernaculum along with it will be pulling down a peritoneal sac which is known as processus vaginalis which is known as processus vaginalis and what will happen the, when ultimately it is coming out, it is coming down to the scrotum, the proximal part of the processus vaginalis over here, it will obliterate. But the distal part will remain as the vaginal sac. It will remain as the vaginal sac. Now, this processus vaginalis which is remaining as the vaginal sac is very important clinically. Why? Because it is a potential place where fluid retention occurs causing hydrocele. Causing hydrocele. 
Now we should know that how does this descent occur? How does this descent occur? As I said, this particular appearance of the testis just lateral to the mesonephric ridge occurs in the seventh week of intrauterine life. So the first landmark is at the fourth month of intrauterine life where this testis will appear in the iliac fossa. The testis will appear in the iliac fossa. The gubernaculum is shortening and the testis is appearing in the iliac fossa at the end of fourth month of fetal life. At the seventh month, it reaches the deep inguinal ring. At the seventh month, it reaches the deep inguinal ring. And by the eighth month, it traverses the entire inguinal canal to come out through the superficial inguinal ring and come to the bottom of the scrotum after birth. So, this is the total story of the descent of testis. The gubernaculum then forms the rudimentary scrotal ligament. So now we will see what are the factors for descent of testis. So what are the factors for descent of testis? The number one factor for the descent of testis is the gubernaculum testis. Gubernaculum testis is otherwise known as the guiding force for descent. It is not the one which contracts. It actually guides the testis to where it should come down. It doesn't pull the testis. It guides the testis. What do you mean by guides the testis? The gubernaculum does not shorten. It widens the inguinal canal and the test testis comes down on its own. Does really testis comes down on its own? Yes, it is the fetal testosterone which is the main driving force whereas the gubernaculum is the guiding force. So it actually widens the inguinal canal for the unobstructed journey of the testis. Moreover, the gubernaculum anchors the testis when the metanephric kidney is ascending from the pelvis to the intra-abdominal part. The gubernaculum is actually absent in case of animals and so the animals in the animals the testis is intra-abdominal. Other factors which augment the descent of testis are intra-abdominal pressure. Next the intra-abdominal temperature we should know that the intra-abdominal temperature is 4 degree higher than this scrotal temperature. Here in the scrotum, the temperature is regulated by the counter current mechanism which is present or which forms between the arterial plexus and the pampiniform plexus. Since this is 4 degree cooler, the scrotum is 4 degree cooler, it augments spermatogenesis. Apart from these, the arched fibers of the internal oblique and the uncurling of the fetal curves, they augment the descent of the testis. And as I mentioned earlier, the driving force for the descent of testis is the fetal testosterone, which is produced by the interstitial cells of Leydig. Now, what are the anomalies of descent we come across? When the scrotum is empty, no testis is present in the scrotum. It is known as anarchism. It is known as anarchism. And this anarchism, in this anarchism, we will have intra-abdominal testis, which is very significant in the adult life because they undergo malignant changes. Next, we have monarchism, where one testis have descended from the abdomen to the scrotum but two testis have not descended. Then we have partially descended testis where the testis descent is 
obstructed somewhere here on its way in the deep inguinal ring, in the inguinal canal or something. And ectopia testis or ectopic testis is the one which I was explaining earlier that apart other than going to the main slip which is at the bottom of the scrotum, the testis gets implanted somewhere where the steels of Lockwood are going. That is either in the symphysis pubis or in the perineum or in the anterior superior iliac spine or in the medial side of the thigh near the saphenous opening. So this in these place if the testis is present this is known as ectopia testis. So actually the this is the story behind the descent of testis. So in the descent of testis we should remember that gubernaculum is not a driving force, it is a guiding force. It extends or expands the inguinal canal to go and make space for the testis to descend.